Hi everyone, this is John Mandrola from the Heart.org Medscape Cardiology and I'm here at the European Society of Cardiology meeting in Munich and I'm pleased to have Professor Jane Armitage who's with me here today. She's from Oxford University and presented the ASCEND trial which is also published in the New England Journal and it's the use of aspirin for primary prevention in patients with diabetes. Welcome Professor. Thanks very much. Can you tell us about the top line results? Okay, well, so for aspirin in this population of people with diabetes who didn't have vascular disease at the time they got into the study, what we found is although those, the vascular events were reduced, it would, the benefits were counterbalanced by the increase in bleeding. So we didn't really see any net benefit of taking aspirin in this population. Okay, so tell us about, let's start with the benefits. What were the... What... Okay, so we, we pre-specified our primary efficacy outcome as being uh, a composite of non-fatal MI, non-fatal ischemic stroke or TIA, and cardiovascular death. And together, that composite was reduced by about 12%, uh, and with about a 1.1% absolute benefit. But we also pre-specified a bleeding outcome, which was a composite of any bleeding inside the head, any GI bleeding um, and other major bleeding and also bleeding in the eye which would be sight threatening and we saw a significant 29% increased risk in the major bleeding with about a 0.8% absolute hazard so what we're balancing is a small benefit against a small hazard and although the benefit slightly wins it's pretty marginal okay so when I first looked at this I thought to myself, more aspirin trials. Don't we have a lot of aspirin trials? Why is this a big deal? Okay, well this is a big deal because for many years we've had trials in very low risk people, healthy individuals, and trials in secondary prevention. But we've been trying to get at the population in the middle, the intermediate risk. And our trial aimed to do that. But actually because diabetes is so well managed nowadays, actually our population was much lower risk than we initially thought it would be. So uh, we have got into the middle, but the low end of the middle, perhaps. And that was a similar story I, I heard about Arrive, was that you expected more events than you actually observed. So what do you make of that? Well, I think it's good news for patients, because what it reflects is actually, among diabetic patients particularly, the drugs that they're taking are protecting them. And three quarters of patients are on statins, uh, the vast majority are on blood pressure lowering tablets, very few smokers and their blood glucose was well controlled and I think those four things were protecting these patients with diabetes and that's good news for them okay. um, and probably much safer way of getting keeping them well than taking an aspirin. All right let me ask you I'm so intrigued by this recent paper on aspirin perhaps there's a heterogeneous treatment effect that aspirin is more beneficial for smaller people and less beneficial. What do you think? I think that uh, that was a post-hoc subgroup analysis that is not in any way supported by our data, which goes in the absolute opposite direction. I saw that. So that all the, most of the people in, in Ascend were actually over 70 kilograms, because of course they were a, uh, an a, uh, overweight diabetic population. And all the benefit was seen among the people who are over 70 kilograms. And actually, if anything, the trend is in the opposite direction that was seen in that. So I think we have to, um, treat that. Be cautious about this whole dose targeting business. Absolutely. Okay, I also want to ask you, there's also big news about aspirin and cancer prevention. Yeah, so again that's been based on looking at older trials with long-term follow-up and this suggestion that there might be both effects on all, all overall cancer but also particularly on GI tract cancers with particular emphasis on colorectal cancers. Uh, we had about just over 300, we saw about 300 uh, colorectal cancer or GI tract cancers and there was absolutely no difference. But for that particular outcome, we probably didn't have good power. Um, but there's no suggestion that there's benefit emerging with longer follow-up. But for all cancers, we had uh, 880 versus a sim very similar number in the two groups. So a lot of cancers, 1,700 cancers. No suggestion of any sort. I'm, I'm curious, what's your thinking? I mean, is there any biologic effect of aspirin to prevent cancer? Well, actually there is. I mean, so if you go to meetings, which I do sometimes, where there are eminent people who understand the cell biology better than I do, they do think that there may be good biological reasons why aspirin might well protect. So I think we can't write off the possibility at all. But 
you know, the prospective data that, you know, this is a good test of the sort of overall high ca cancer hypothesis and we really don't see any suggestion that it's the case. Final question. Uh, let's, uh, let's say you're a 50, I'm a 55-year-old diabetic with high blood pressure and I ask you, should I take aspirin? I'd What's say make sure you take your statins and your blood pressure lowering and you keep your glucose under control and not smoke. And then I, I think that the benefits of aspirin will not outweigh the risks and that you might cause yourself a nasty bleed if you were to do that and not really much protection. Excellent. Thank you so much for being with us. I really appreciate it. Pleasure.